Hello and welcome to this, the third conversation with the Leader and Deputy of Cheshire East Council. I'm Michael and today I'm joined by Councillor Sam Corcoran, the Leader of the Council. Hello. And Councillor Craig Brown, the Deputy Leader. Hello. So thank you to everybody who submitted questions. Once again, we've received uh, very many questions from residents, so we may not be able to get to answer them all, um, but we will cover as many as we can in the time we've got available. We've received a number of questions about um, a, a possible pedestrian crossing on the hill in Sandbach. Tanya from Sandbach asks, I'd like to ask what would be the requirement to install a crossing on the hill towards Hassel Road in Sandbach? And Annika from Sandbach Heath says, I walk with my children to school every day and struggle to cross the hill opposite the Heath and Manor Road near the co-op shop. Some days we wait 10 minutes, up to 10 minutes to safely cross. Well, firstly, I can confirm that a crossing at this location was considered um, a few years ago, actually. And uh, as Ward Councillor, Sam may wish to uh, add a little bit to what I have to say. But the council's methodology takes into account uh, both existing demand and local representations, as well as the feasibility of construction and uh, relative priority as compared with other sites. So the location uh, that we're being asked about does uh, face some challenges and uh, access and frontages to existing properties are among them. Um, and these make the installation of a crossing at that point uh, quite difficult. Having said this, my committee, the Highways and Transport Committee, is going to be considering a review of the criteria at its meeting in January. Um, and this might result in greater priority being able to be given to, uh, for example, trips to the shops, uh, local schools and other community facilities. However, what the policy review won't do um, is make additional funding available. Um, the funding that we realistically need to deliver um, pedestrian crossings at every point um, across the borough where residents feel they're necessary um, simply isn't available. Um, to put this in context, the funding that we currently have available will only fund about one new crossing for the whole borough um, each year. Now, I am aware that there have been some housing developments in the area and that some Section 106 funds have been raised on these. However, um, these are carefully worded legal agreements. And in this case, the funds uh, that have been raised have been allocated towards improvements at the A533 at the Hill Junction. Well, as has been said, in 2018, I was involved in a campaign for a crossing at the top of the hill as the ward councillor. A survey was done and it didn't meet the criteria. The new administration is committed to being open, fair and green, and that means that even the leader of the council has to accept and work within the rules. Other crossings were installed where they met the criteria or funding was available from nearby housing developments. If the improvements of the A533 between the lights at the bottom of the hill and the Waitrose roundabout do not proceed within the next year, then I will be arguing for that £100,000 of developer funding to be used for a crossing. I recognise the need for highways improvements on the A533 to reduce queues on the Old Mill Road bypass, but those improvements are dependent on funding from other developments which have not yet come forward. So although the campaign in 2018 wasn't successful, I remain hopeful. Peter in Sandbach has written in to say, I don't believe the council is doing anywhere near enough to promote alternative greener and healthier forms of travel, in particular cycling infrastructure. What's the council's strategy for resolving the barriers to cycling and encouraging greener and healthier travel? Right, well, firstly, I agree that more needs to be done to promote cycling. Cycling to work or to school is good for your health, it's good for the environment in reducing car journeys and it's fun. The Council is committed to tackling climate change and being carbon neutral by 2025, one of the most ambitious targets in the country. 
The council is also committed to listening to residents and we followed consultation results in removing some cycle schemes. I would appeal to all residents to respond to consultations positively if they agree with the proposals. The borough's cycle network has been receiving an increased level of investment in recent years, both from the council and from funding provided through Active Travel England. The enhanced investment is welcome, though it remains insufficient to meet all of our ambitions, which are defined in recently updated local transport plans, plus our local walking and cycling improvement plans. We are hoping to strengthen the Council's working relationship with Active Travel England and agencies such as Sustrans to attract more investment. Our recently adopted strategy for well-managed highways does take account of the needs of pedestrians and cyclists when setting standards for maintenance inspections. Um, we've also received a couple of questions about sustainable travel options and road safety on Alteringham Road and between Disley and Poynton. So first question, I'm keen to understand why there are no traffic control measures such as traffic lights and speed cameras on Alteringham Road when there's a primary school there, Gorsley Bank Primary School, and why there's no crossing or speed deterrent on Alteringham Road by the Hickories and Lindo Common. And then additionally, what is the plan for joined up, tran uh, tran sorry, what is the plan for a joined up transport route from Disley to Poynton? There are no buses and the advisory cycle lane stops at High Lane. Firstly, on Altingham Road in, in Wilmslow, um, the, the A538 between Wilmslow and Nuns Moss Lane is restricted to 30 miles an hour. Uh, over time, the road has seen um, a number of safety measures introduced, including signage and markings to help improve driver awareness. Recently, the council also completed the Wilmslow Cycleway, um, opening up a new section between Wilmslow and again Nans Moss Lane, providing a traffic free segregated cycle lane uh, along the busy A538. And in terms of Poynton, the A6 route through High Lane is recognised both by this council but also by Stockport MBC um, as a key. Uh, movement corridor for many road users, including cyclists. Um, options to provide a continuous uh, on-road cycle lane do exist. Uh, however, these are likely to require the removal of a number of parking bays, um, as well as pedestrian crossing points and bus stops. Um, so the route therefore needs uh, quite a bit more work doing on it to make sure that we get the right balance um, to meet the needs of different road users. Um, however, once again, any solution is likely to be dependent upon discretionary funding uh, being made available from central government um, to enable the project to go ahead. Alec and Val from Congleton have written in to ask about pavement parking. Val says, is there a target date to liberate our pavements from vehicles being parked on mm -hmm. them and wheelie bins being strewn on them or being left permanently out? This discriminates against those using wheelchairs and mobility scooters and also children as they have to use the road instead. Well, firstly, I think we both completely agree that uh, pavement parking is a significant issue within the borough. Unfortunately, the council has really very limited powers to to address the obstruction of pavements by parked cars um, outside of London, uh, where of course pavement parking is banned. Enforcement responsibility for pavement driving and pavement parking rests with the police. Um, in 2020, the Department for Transport did consult local authorities on options to extend the powers available to us in terms of pavement parking and uh, as you would expect Cheshire East Council responded positively to that survey. Um, we welcomed it however um, almost three years later uh, we are still waiting for the government to bring forward the necessary legislation that would enable us to adopt these powers. Okay and, and in a linked question 
Richard from Macclesfield has asked, how does the council propose to manage the inevitable, pro inevitable problems that will occur when residents with no off street parking start to run cables across pavements referring elect to electric vehicles and electric vehicles charging? Um, what is the best practice elsewhere? Again, we completely recognise the, the potential for this to become a problem. Um, we are doing what we can to improve the availability of on-street electric vehicle charging points. And uh, in fact, we've quite recently been successful um, in a bid for £151,000 to the Energy Saving Trust, which will see new points installed in places like Macclesfield. Um, and through this, we will be aiming to uh, minimise the impact of cables uh, by carefully siting the charging points either at the curb side um, or very close to the curb um, edge so that the cable run used is far shorter. Um, a resident in Renbury Heath has asked, why as a council do you allow far too much house building? You're ruining Croon and Antwich. And David in Congleton has asked, with the increase in housing developments in the Congleton area, what is being done to increase the number of school places in Congleton for the increased population? Well, through their local plans, all local planning authorities must enable a sufficient number of markets and affordable housing to be built in their areas. The way in which local plan housing requirements are calculated must be in line with the approach set out in national planning policy. The Council's local plan strategy adopted in 2017 includes a requirement for 36,000 homes to be built in the borough between 2010 and 2030, equating to an average of 1,800 homes a year. National planning policy also requires councils to maintain a forward supply of deliverable housing development land equivalent to five years worth of its annualised housing requirement. Cheshire East Council does now have a robust five year housing land supply, so we can resist speculative housing applications on greenfield sites. Six years ago, the absence of a five year supply allowed developers to promote speculative housing proposals on the edges of towns and villages, and some of the houses granted permission then are still being built. So in summary, the council is re required to provide for sufficient new homes to be built. Cheshire East is now fulfilling this requirement in a plan led way, but we can't withdraw planning permissions that have already been granted in the past. I would also add that although often controversial, it is also important to remember that housing development is needed to meet the needs of local people, including those who need an affordable home and to support jobs and economic investment in the borough. On the school places, the Cheshire East Children and Families team work closely with all local schools and as part of the ongoing pupil forecasting for Congleton, we have a number of schemes currently progressing to provide additional places. This includes an additional 150 secondary school places at both Eton Bank School and Congleton High School, providing an additional 300 places in total. There are also schemes currently progressing at Blackfurs Primary and Buglawton Primary to provide additional accommodation for the number of children on roll. And there are options to provide further primary places in the Congleton West area going forward. In addition, the local authority has secured a site for a new primary school at the Giants Wood housing development. The pupil yield and future forecast numbers are closely monitored and the new school will be progressed as the need arises and will be carefully reviewed in terms of the impact on other Congleton schools. A resident in Macclesfield has written in to ask about the works at Broken Cross, saying that residents are all in agreement that traffic lights should not go ahead. Um, they're told that they should contact Bellway or HA Civils, and then they tell residents to contact Cheshire East, so nothing is getting addressed. So again, we, we understand the frustration that residents uh, feel towards this, um, but it's perhaps important for me to explain, first of all, that uh, approval for this scheme was given when planning permission was granted uh, back in 2018. 
And this was, uh, to be fair, well before either the leader or I were in our, our current positions. When the planning application was submitted, um, it was accompanied by a transport assessment uh, detailing the impacts of both the Jones Homes and the Bellway uh, residential schemes. And that transport assessment considered various options, including uh, the retention of the roundabout, uh, but it demonstrated that the junction would not be able to cope with the added volume of traffic resulting from those two developments. And following further discussions with the applicant, again during the, the previous administration, around the requirement to mitigate those traffic volumes um, and improve pedestrian safety, a, a traffic signal option was found to be the preferred option. Um, following that analysis, Cheshire East Council did commission an independent check of the modelling. And in fact, that check also concurred with the um, submission that the traffic signal option uh, was the best solution. Um, whilst I've said all this took place prior to either the leader's involvement or my involvement, um, there are undoubtedly some lessons that uh, we need to take away in terms of the way in which the council has communicated this to residents. A resident in Macclesfield has written in to say what investments and projects or money is being spent to improve the appearance of the town of Macclesfield and its parishes for 2023. Litter, graffiti, empty shops seeming to be the biggest problem. Well, firstly, something to celebrate. Um, I'm delighted that out of 107 retail units on Chestergate in Macclesfield, 100 are now occupied by independent businesses, which of course help to uh, add to the vibrancy of the town centre. Um, whilst unfortunately the council can't always influence the asset strategies of private companies, um, but with the closure of Marks and Spencers, um, and clearly that's disappointing for the town centre, discussions are ongoing with regard to what might replace it. Um, all I can say at this time is that there are some really quite exciting plans afoot, uh, but it is important to remember that this building is not council owned, uh, but rather a private business opportunity. Um, what the council has been able to do with the resources available um, is to improve the public realm, uh, which can in turn stimulate private investment um, in the surrounding areas. For example, in 2021, um, the council invested £1.7 million in the redevelopment of Castle Street, significantly enhancing the appearance of that area of Macclesfield. Um, and whilst we would love to be able to do something similar on Chestergate, uh, we're only going to be able to do that with additional funding from central government. And so we have applied for a further £7.8 million from the government's levelling up fund um, for investment in the public realm in Macclesfield Town Centre. But of course, the decision on that funding bed uh, rests with central government and is something that we, we continue to await. <laughs> 